let's get extra nerdy. Welcome to another short talk and today we're going to talk about something particularly nerdy that I particularly enjoy. Among the many things that entertain and occupy my spare time, RPG games, role play games are one of my absolute favorites and I have two particular systems I enjoy more than anything else. One's Pathfinder and the other one's Battletech. And today we're talking about Battletech. Battletech I particularly enjoy because one, it's sci-fi and it's also a tabletop miniatures game which allows me to combine yet another one of my favorite things into my already existing favorite thing. So Battletech, what is it? Well, it's a tabletop miniatures game produced by Catalyst Games, link down below. It's a space opera, high science, high drama system set in the years between 3020 all the way up to 3150 and beyond. It's all about giant battle mechs, great big war machines duking it out for king, country, honor and money. Now it's available in a wide variety of formats including computer games which are the most well known through to like the box set tabletop game and then you've got all the books like all the different uh, tabletop books and things related to it. Then you've got all the novel series, there's a heck of a lot of them. I mean, a lot of novels. It's like Game of Thrones in space. The politics that they cover in these books, and the whole backstory, and the whole build-up about the whole world and the galaxy, and all the great houses, and the ruling factions, and all the intrigue and carry on, it's madness. It's a lot of fun. Not all the books are great. Not everyone enjoys all of the books. But hey, that's what happens when you've got such a massive universe and a massive collection of writers. You're not always going to like everything they produce. On a side note, the IP for Battletech has changed hands so many times. Great success to great failure and then back up to success again. Uh, look it up on Wikipedia. Have a, have a dig through the incredible dramas attached to the behind the scenes of this product. It's been running for a long time and it's had a bumpy path. How does the game work? Okay, real quick. The miniatures, they go on a hex map. It's a, hex, it's a hex map range and movement system. You can usually have one map, up to four, six, or nine maps, all connected to make one big engagement zone. 2d6 based, move, measure, shoot. Damage for each mech is tracked on a record sheet, which is almost like an RPG sheet for any other character. They take damage, you note it down. They spend ammo, you note it down. They take internal damage, you tr where is it? They take internal damage, you track it in here. You also got to track heat because different weapons and different actions generate heat. Too much heat, your mech will shut down or cook off the ammo and explode. Not a good thing. You can either print them out as you need them, or I like to print them and then laminate them. Laminating can take a bit of time, but that's okay, because I want to bought myself a laminator. And then you end up with, of course, a massive amount of these laminated sheets, because there are literally hundreds of variants of these different mechs. And of course, like any tabletop game where you collect minis, the other part of the hobby is painting them. Different color schemes, different camo styles, different look and different heraldry, however you want to do it. I've got my own little painting studio set up at the back so I can look at the world and paint my minis. And then of course, I collect and stick them all on a the shelf and then use them when I want to or when I can. Anyway, back to the main thrust of this, the role play game. Now, the two different versions of the game, One's called a Time of War, a much more complicated and intricate uh, style of RPG system. Then you've got the new one, the new beta one that's coming with the Kickstarter called MechWarrior Destiny. Much more simplified, much more quick and easy to play, much more flexible, a lot less rules. That's the one I'm looking at, that's what I'm getting into at the moment, and that's a lot of fun. There's two particular phases or styles of an RPG game in this world, when I'm running it anyway. One is out of mech stuff. That's your characters negotiating deals, investigating leads, chasing down rumors, scoping out the battlefield, recruiting NPCs, firing some NPCs, trying to figure out which NPCs double crossing them, traveling to new worlds, investigating environments, and checking out the game world that I've designed for them to run around in. That world being set within the parameters of the Battletech lore. I sometimes stretch and bend the lore at times to suit the story and suit the world but I generally stick to it as much as possible. That way it gives a consistent and recognizable flavor. And of course, my favorite part of this is once the characters are in the world, they're doing the thing, they decide to take on a contract or a job, I then get to build them all up to it and then switch over the tabletop, break out the miniatures, break out the battle map. And now we've got a tabletop game with RP elements that we can import from the RP side of things onto said tabletop game and off we go. Slug it out for a couple of hours there, and once all the dust settles from that, drop back into proper RPG mode, and then they can figure out payment, salvage, sort out any wounds, what are they going to do with captives, and all the carry on from that. Along the way, they may have made some bad choices on the battlefield that's going to translate into ripple effect 
in their RP world. They may have won the fight, but if they displayed poor honor, dirty, dirty tactics, and behaved in pretty much nasty manner, that will have ripple effects. That will affect their reputation. Hey, it may even get them bounty put on their heads. They may even get disbanded from the mercenary board. And then we've got a pirate game. I also run a sandbox style game. What does that mean? That means instead of being stuck in a linear path and doing module, 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 or say one adventure closed off from the rest of the world, what players in my game can do and often will do is they'll go, you know what? We've got all this stuff, but hey, let's go and look at this world. Let's travel over here and check out what's over there. And then it's my job to build the world that they're traveling in. So in this case, I have a new Battletech game brewing, bubbling away that should be starting fairly soon. So what I have to do is go and build the first game world that they'll encounter. The name of this world in the Battletech lore is called Kincaid 2. Kincaid 2 is set out on the edge, an area known as the periphery. It's outside of the control of the major houses, but still has a little bit of influence in through the Outworlds Alliance. That's not gonna make it much sense to most people, but I'm just showing you the general idea. All the information you can find about this particular world, it was violently conquered once or twice and generally is devoid of other information. So I get a bit of a free hand with this. I've decided to make an arid tundra world with a medium level population and moderate level of civilization as well. It's got moderate levels of technology, agriculture, farming, mining, and production facilities. I've also looked into the general style of government because the players are going to be dealing with that. They are mercenaries on another world. There are laws, rules, and established practices. I've decided it's a frontier democracy style of government. It's got more of a Middle Ages approach to democracy, which means, you know, it generally means well, but it can be a little rough and ready at times. Imagine a modern day Moss Eisley with an actual police force. That sort of thing. There'll be two main sorts of authority. You're going to have the general police who look after the general population and the garrison, the troops, the army that are deployed amongst government installations. The cops generally don't care. They're not going to get involved in anything unless it's a moderate or higher level problem. A gunfight in the street, they will take action on. A punch up, yeah, they're not really going to care about. If there's knives involved, they might have to have a look. On the whole, the police in this world are generally there to stop the whole place from flying apart. They don't have the time or the resources to get down to the micromanagement level. The garrison, on the other hand, have zero interest in anything that doesn't happen within government-controlled areas. There could be a bank robbery or a raid or a full-on riot outside the government structure. They won't care. You cross the line, then they care. And that will escalate very quickly. Do not cross the militia. They almost have martial law within the bounds of their own territory. That gives the players a little bit of room to maneuver. That gives them some fun things to face, some challenges that could be quite threatening at times, and just a bit of politics for them to step around and negotiate. And since this is a game about starting up a mercenary company, we're going to get down to wages and micromanagement here. The players are going to have to manage their resources and their funds quite closely. I've also sat down and figured out the general buy price and sell price for different resources and products that the character is going to encounter. Just because you've looted a $2 million battle mech from the battlefield doesn't mean you're going to sell it for $2 million. More than likely about 33% of the value. That's what the market will be. It might be worth more to break it up or sell it in parts. Just depends how the economy goes at the time. So that's a quick snapshot of the world I put together for them. A robust frontier democracy full of gunslingers, cowboys and mercenaries, a police force of limited professionalism, and a militia that tends to have a hair trigger and no sense of humor. And that's the starting world for where the players are going to build and introduce their characters and start interacting with the galaxy to see where they go from there. They may hire everyone they need for their startup company right here on Kincaid. They may decide to go planet hopping and cherry pick from the local hiring halls. They might even decide to skip across the galaxy and start somewhere fresh, where you know there is a bit more of an economy and a bit more of a job market for them to start up in. It really depends on where they want to go and what they want to do. So that's it for this little short talk. Nothing to do with movies this time. Hope that's okay. I just felt like talking about something a little different. Comment down below. Tell me what you think. Do you play this game? Do you play roleplay games at all? What's the most amazing table disaster that you've ever had to sit through? And if people are interested, I'll do another talk. This time about Pathfinder. And my current game that I'm running. And the incredible disaster. Yet highly entertaining adventure that that particular game group has put me and themselves through. As always, hope you're having a great week and you find some time to go watch a movie or play a game. Have a good one.